board to scrap. No, I don't want to actually destroy this one. Give me a second, I will find some board to test. Okay, I've got some board to test and we are going to check the new one, fix it one, replace it one. Let's fire this baby up. Let's go to 230. You can see the heat up speed. So basically it's quite slow. So that's another information about the stacking solder inside. So if you try hurry up like right now melting sucking the solder you might end it up in clogging the barrel so make sure that you left it sit for uh, some time after you find the right temp on the setting so even it will be temp free free celsius so wait a couple more time because the the probe is here so you have to wait until the old barrel will be heated so let's wait a second and you've got all your temps set but i do not recommend you doing right now I would recommend you waiting a couple of seconds until it will heat up. So what we are going to unsolder. So let's we want to unsolder this <coughs> this capacitor. So the leg will be here. And I'm going to add some flux. Which leg is it? I think this is one. Okay, so... And just wiggle around like this. And start sucking. And you've got your capacitor like what? Now I'm going to add a little flux on the another leg which is here I believe or I hope or maybe this is I don't know which one is it let's try this let's try this leg Or maybe it is not this one yes it is so basically you very easily unsolder at this capacitor the pads as you can see are okay are not damaged this is a single sideboard so it's very easy so let's see what we can see inside and there is a little bit of solder right there and some residue on the filter so yes that's how it's working so as i said i was using this over a year about one hour per week so that's that's average because sometime i spent uh, much longer time desoldering some components when I scraping
So basically sometimes I was working a couple of hours straight when I was unsoldiering, you know, like rotary encoders and other stuff. So sometimes I'm spending uh, much more time, sometimes less. So how often do I need to clean this? Because that was a good question. So about one per week when you are using this straight like scraping components when I'm using this one hour per week like for normal jobs when you have to like right now I unsolder some components and that's all so it was like sitting one hour heating up and I was like replacing a power socket you know free force so solder pull up the socket so one over one time per per week I'm doing a cleaning and then the, depending on the on the job so so sometimes you have to when you're scraping component you you're going to clean this one time per hour sometimes one per week sometimes one per month it's it's depending how much solder are you going actually to suck because if you're scraping the board so you're going to fill this up very quickly so I definitely recommend you this station this station is absolutely amazing I honestly had an expensive one I borrowed the Denon 7200Z I believe that was a model which is semi-professional one and I actually did not buy them because the all the spare parts on the Denon was too expensive and I did not see much more much more positive from the from the the Denon one there is one big difference between the Denon and for like a positive side of the Denon which is the Denon have a sucking pump inside of the unit so there is no hose like this one here you've got just the hose going into the unit so basically when you pressing the sucking it do not have this very forceful suck just on the beginning so the pressure have to build up inside this hose and it starts slowly and going up and sometimes I ended up in situation that I suck on the double side of that board I suck on this side but I didn't manage to suck from the other side so what I have to do you have to grab your soldering iron put solder again and then try to suck heat up wiggle to suck again and you have to sometimes do couple of tries of this so on the Denon I didn't have this problem because the motor was inside so the the first suck was very hard and it was so powerful that it was sucking always from the other side so that's, that's just a thing that you have to notice but there was a lot of disadvantage of the Denon one so first of all this one is very lightweight because it didn't have the motor and the other things so it's very easy to operate then it was much heavier and the other most important thing the spare part on this one are very inexpensive they are very cheap and on the Denon it was pretty expensive the all the the heating heating tips was very expensive and I don't see much difference 
because you know like you can buy one of the denon original one and we've got like 10 of these so you have to weigh around i believe that it's better to to be able to change them a couple of times per per year then then basically having one expensive and you know like waiting until it's completely damaged because the the tip is going to erode it's the hole is getting larger and larger and larger so you have to replace them for a new one so yeah that's I believe everything what I have to share on this station so I really recommend you this one it's a very good station I'm using this as a hobby about one hour per week of doing some kind of work and for me it's working perfect no problem except of this damage but this was done by my own stupidity so if you're going to use this as it should be you would not have this problem so please have this in mind so but but I absolutely recommend you buying this one with a glass because this work absolutely amazing easy for cleaning I don't know what more you want to get from this the soldering station absolutely fantastic great value for money so I recommend you thank you for watching and bye bye